Hello and welcome to another update video about Quant QNT. QNT did retest this wave one high um, a few days ago and is now bouncing back to the upside. So we're going to take a look at what that could mean for from an Elliott wave point of view, from a technical analysis point of view. For everybody who's new, just a reminder that my view is that QNT is in, in a larger bullish scenario here. This is valid as long as we're holding the $80 level. I could allow it to go down to the um, did it? $61 level, that's the 88.7% FIP level, but going below the 78.6 will cost the chart some reliability and it will mean higher risk because most charts or most so-called one, two setups are failing if the price drops below the 88.7% FIP level or if the price retraces more than the, well, actually retraces more than the 78.6, the 88.7 is really the last, the last resort where um, the bulls or the bears, depending on which trend, what kind of trend you're looking at, um, can turn around. Now it can still work out, but it's all about likelihoods. And um, yeah, so the $80 level, ideally we're holding that, wh whatever happens here now, yeah. So just as a reminder then, we moved up in a wave one, from June into October, and we're now coming down here, or we came down in a wave two. This was a trend reversal area where we expected the price to turn around. Um, on the macro or the micro side, I would have liked to see it go down a little bit lower, just because this structure here leaves a lot of options in, in terms of where we are and what the price could do. So it's not ideal, this bottoming process here that happened, but we're going to take a look at that in a minute. So either way, the support area worked out and we have turned around and we are on our way to the next target area. I did give you that target area at the moment when we broke above the $127 level. Mentioned to you that was the breakout point until $127. I still said it's still likely to get another low, but above that, obviously, that above this breakout point, the chart would gain some traction which it did, and within a couple of days, it rallied all the way up to $148 nearly. But with that, it missed our target area, which is so important to prove that we indeed are in a larger breakout. Just as an explanation, this target area is based on this wave one, the wave two, and then we get to the $152 level. That is the 1.618 Fibonacci extension. This level needs to be reached to say with at least a fairly strong likelihood that this is a third wave. If we don't even get there, it's not a third wave and we are at large risk of still breaking down. Yeah, I mean, it's all likelihood, it's all probabilities. At the moment, it seems like we're gonna get there and I would expect some reaction to it or at least to this area. I have made the area quite large because from experience, QNT likes to overshoot these targets. So the 1.618, I need to say that very clearly, is always just the minimum. So be careful not just to, without any kind of reversal signal, just to enter a short trade at 152 because you think the target area is reached. The trend is of course going as long as we're making higher highs and higher lows. And this is the area where I expected the price to get into. And I think we will, from at least from what I can see now, momentum is certainly still up, but there's no guarantee that we're going to turn around at $152. In fact, the expectation would now be that we're following the white count and that even if we get a rejection there that we could still only come down in a shallow wave four and would still continue higher in a wave five. So even if we get some kind of a larger setback, if it has a corrective wave structure, it's likely there's only a wave four and then we would still get a fifth wave to the upside. So this area starts at the 1.618 extension, goes all the way up to the 2.618 extension at $184. So we've got certain resistances here at 152, 158, 164, and 176, and then 184. So let's see what we react to. Um, at the moment, certainly the trend is still up. You can clearly see that. We did get quite a large setback, but that was not a wave four yet. Um, so I can't do it like this because the wave three wasn't low enough. Okay, so that's not valid. That's not valid. Um, so it could just be a sub wave four maybe and we're now rallying in that sub wave five of three. Um, important to mention is that we retested here the previous high. That's certainly confirmation that the uptrend is still ongoing and we had a bullish crossover here between the 20 and the 50 day moving averages. So that's also 
pointing towards further upside at the moment. So the trend is clearly up here in the short term. So we can go with this at the moment, especially as long as we're now holding the $127 level. Breaking below $127 would rather, I think, increase the probability that we are here in the C wave. So we are going to observe it when we get to that, because this is the other possibility. I mean, if we do not reach the green target area or if we react to the green target area and can come down impulsively, then break down below the $127 level. Let me just quickly double check that. Yeah, and break below $127 from a current point of view would indicate that we are in a C wave so that the entire wave two actually was never finished. So that will finish somewhere down there. Maybe we hold the $80 level, that would be ideal. And then we had here an A wave. This currently is a B wave. And then we would come down still in a C wave. Yeah, so this is still possible, especially as long as we only have three waves to the upside. We only have three waves up. So there is still significant risk that this is only an ABC in B and we come down in a larger C wave. Um, watch out for that. Yeah, watch out for that. But uh, that is why anybody who did enter in my support area down there, yeah, this was the, I mean, there was enough time to scale in. Yeah, and maybe only your first buy order got triggered because we didn't get down low enough. But even if you, if one of you has got triggered, you're certainly in profit. And what I would do in this situation, I would move up my stop loss slightly into profit. So the risk is taken out because if we come down in C, you can scale in again lower. And if we are really in the uptrend in a wave four, you shouldn't come down that, mu that much anyway. So yeah, you should actually stay above $127. That's sort of how I see it at the moment. Yeah, it's always a good idea in my opinion to move the stop loss into profit. The advantage of this trading method that scaling into support areas provides because you, know, you typically see some kind of a reaction to a support area, even if it's only a bearish one, and then you can move up your stop loss to, to take out the risk. So that's sort of where we are currently with q and I think highly interesting. I hope you liked the update. If you did, please hit the like button, leave a comment and subscribe. And also don't forget to follow us on Instagram and Twitter. There's additional content every day. And other than that, see you in the next video. Thank you. Bye-bye.